What's going on YouTube? This is Cody and we're back for some new content. Today we're going to have a breakdown of what I see is going to happen at YCS Philadelphia and what you should prepare for. It, okay, I'm going to bring some facts and some personal experiences from my own personal data that I have, you know, collected these past couple of weeks, uh, especially since uh, Cyberstorm or Cyberstrike dropped, right? Um, I think that Super Heavy Samurai was definitely what it was uh, advertised as, right? It was a format warping deck. Pearly too. I think Pearly and Super Heavy definitely warped the format up. Even the Math Mix support with the Cyberus, you know, cards warped the format as well, right? But let's not be misunderstood for a second. The best deck in the room is still Kachatira. Okay, a rising hard pass is still a problem. So before we start talking about these other things, don't get it, don't get it messed up. This is still cash format. They still run these things. Okay. So with that being said, because of the introduction of super heavy and pearly, drone lotbird is back in the format. What does that mean? It means is if you're not running drill, you could you 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 kind of lose the droll like it, it just it is what it is right like you you if you're not running droll you're not doing it right I'm gonna be honest with you you gotta play droll in your deck you just have to you have to you have to play droll you gotta play ghost ogre you gotta play gamma like you just gotta play a bunch of hand traps this is the format right now where we're in a hand trap format this is literally hand trap dot deck and personally speaking I don't mind because I'm a control player in my hearts of hearts so if you're telling me yo Cody we're in this tournament. You gotta play control deck if you wanna have a good day. I'm 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 game. I'm game. Okay? Gang gang. Okay. So with that being said, um the cards to look out for when playing is drawing lot bird, gamma, ghost ogre, ash, and perm, valor. Um shit. Even um even what's that card called? Moonlight Chill? Yeah, you know. Nibiru? Now here's the thing, right? Here's the crazy thing about this format. Depending on who you're playing against, Nibiru is super devastating. But it can be super trash. Like, Nibiru does nothing against Pearly. Right? Does nothing. Now, granted, if you're playing against Super Heavy Samurai and you draw and lock them, Nibiru's pretty clutch. It's a pretty good card. It's pretty good. But it's on and off. It's on and off. Right? On and off cards like Nibiru. Uh, on and off cards like Imperm. On and off cards like Ash Blossom. Like, in certain scenarios, these cards are just not that good against certain decks. But we all can agree, or we all should agree, is hand traps are a staple in this format. So if you're going to YCS Philadelphia next week, because this video is going to drop on a Saturday, you better be playing at least 15 hand traps, at least. If you're playing 12, I'm going to look at you and say, I hope God blesses your deck. I hope he, I hope he blesses the shuffles. I hope you draw into two hand traps, at minimum. You have to draw these two hand traps at minimum, or you're going to have a bad day. Just look at this replay right now. You see the dinosaur player got hit with an empire in past turn. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, like, it's very unfortunate. It's very, very, very unfortunate. However, this is a hand trap format. Now, it is a hand trap format, but Kachatira is still the best deck, if not the best deck, in my honest opinion. If I had to make a guess on what deck's going to win Philadelphia, it's probably going to be a Kachatira deck. And you're probably wondering, so wait, Cody, you're not playing at YCS Philadelphia? No, I'm playing. I'm playing. And I'm not playing cash. But if I were to lose... If I were to lose, it would likely be to a cafeteria deck because a rising heart pass is just so consistent and still very strong. Granted, I have cards that addresses it, but I have to draw into those cards. That's the name of the game. And whenever you walk into a format or walk into an event, right, a big event, small event, doesn't matter. You walk into an event, you have to be realistic with yourself. You got to answer the question, am I playing the best deck? If your answer is no, your next question is, Am I playing cards that address the, the best deck of the room? If your answer is yes, then you're probably going to have a decent day. If your answer is no, you're going to have an early day. Okay? So if I were you guys, right, because YCS Philadelphia is a week from now, right, especially when this video drops, right? If I were you guys, I would do my homework on these five decks. Super Heavy Samurai. Pearly. Cassiterra. Mathmex and Dragonlinks. Dragonlinks. I said that. 
Dragonlings is a very solid deck right now because it's an anti-meta type strategy. Um, Bissios give Despia a bad time. They also give Mathmex a bad time, right? And they're able to outgrind these really strong decks. They, they have a very good grind game. And it's very popular right now. Like, Dragon Links is that deck that keeps the bad decks out of the format, like Tear Elements, Despia, right? Like, just certain decks that aren't necessarily good, it's because Dragon Links is just better than them, right? And, and that's why I put Dragon Links at number five. However, if I had to make, like, a top five list, the best decks from one to five, I would honestly say Dragon Links is five. Pearly is probably, like, four or three. It's like a miss. It's like a mix up between Pearly and Mathmex, right? For three and four, and then one and two is also like a mix up between Cassiterra and Super Heavy. But I honestly would put Cassiterra over Super Heavy, just because of how consistent Cassiterra is. It's ability to play through hand traps and its ability to end on a Super Negate. And granted, it's not a Super Negate, right? Like. A Rising Heart does not negate any cards. However, a Rising Heart prevents certain cards from being activated. And a Floodgate boss monster is better than a Super Negate board sometimes, if not most of the times. <clears throat> because it forces your opponent to have the card. Like, you just have to have it. If you have, to, if you put your opponent on, you better have it. You are in an advantage game state. Now, certain things to be prepared for, too, right, with the Super Heavy Samurai deck. Bagushka and Zeus. Now, you're probably thinking, Cody, what are you talking about? Bagushka and Zeus? Why would I be prepared for that? Well, granted, if, you super, if you're playing Super Heavy Samurai, for example, you hand-trapped them two or three times, they pass the turn, they're likely going to pass the turn Bagushka, right? When they pass on Bagushka, you're forced to out the Bagushka. If you cannot out the Bagushka, they're going to go Zeus. The next turn, they're going to smack you with the Bagushka and go Zeus. They're going to clear your board, and they're going to make a Super Negate board right behind that. And that, honestly, is the most, like, devastating thing that could happen. So, if you want to have a good day, you need to have an answer for Super Heavy Samurai's ability to go Baguska, and the following turn goes Zeus, right? As far as Curly goes, you have to main deck, like, one Kaiju or something. Like, you have to main deck, some, like, at least one answer to them. Or, at the bare minimum, side deck an answer. Now, granted, Pearlies cannot play through a lot of hand traps. A well-timed Impermed, well-timed Valor... Well time Ash, well time Gamma, well time Ghost Ogre, they will mess them up. If Pearlies can't get into the, the, the super big guy that's unaffected by card effects that can send things two times in one turn, the deck is completely trash and you can easy steamroll it. And that's why I think it's one of the most underwhelming best decks in the room, right? As far as Dragonlings go, if you're playing a deck that doesn't have light or dark monsters in the graveyard for them, they can't go as plus against you. If you're also playing a deck that has a good time playing under Nibiru, right? Like, you could put a, a negate out and then go full combo, but having the gate come out within five summons or less and then go full combo, you'll have a good time against uh, Dragon Links, right? As far as Mathmex go, Mathmex is a kind of complicated deck, right? Because if you're playing Bistials, right, you can shoot the card that they're going to bring out with Super Factorial, so you don't have to necessarily worry about them going super combo. All you got to do is just hold on to that bestial for when they go super factorial, target the diameter, or target the sigma, or target whatever it's in graveyard that's light or dark that they're going to use as XYZ material. Granted, I suggest you target diameter because whatever they bring out won't have a negate. So they bring out a search guy, but it won't have a negate. And that's good because then it forces them to have cards in hand that can interact with you and stop you. If they don't have that, you can just kill them, Right? So in my honest opinion, on a scale from 1 to 10, what would I rate this format? What would I rate this YCS format that's coming up? I would give it an 8 out of 10, and, and I would say it's probably one of the better formats we had in a very long time. The former format we had, which was a uh, tier format, was trash. I hated that format. Like, admittedly, I hated that format. Um, oh, no, no, no. So the last format was cash format. The format before that was tier format. Tier format I hated completely. It was trash. The cash format that we had wasn't so bad. It was okay. This card format, it's been pretty good. It's, it's probably one of the better formats we had in quite a long time. I can't remember our last good format we had, but this specifically is one of the best formats we had in a very long time. And I hope that the balance that comes out doesn't greatly impact it where we're forced to all play one deck again that I find is unfun and unfair. Right? And you're going to hear me say a lot about fun and fairness on this channel. Because in my opinion, 
Yu-Gi-Oh! should be a card game where you're having fun and you feel like you have a fair shake of winning the duel. Just like your opponent also has a fair shake of winning the duel. It's not because I rolled the die roll, therefore I win the duel. It shouldn't be because I play this particular deck. And if you're not playing this particular deck, you lost the duel. You know, so fun and fair. If you enjoy the content, guys, smash that subscribe button. Hit the like button and go in the comment section and let me know what are your thoughts on this video of what I discussed with you guys. And what do you think will be the deck that wins YCS Philadelphia? I'm calling it right now. Casatira will get first place at the event. And if I'm wrong, I'll give a giveaway for you guys. I will give away the next set box. Okay? I'll do a box giveaway if I'm wrong. Okay? So that being said, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.